Hello. Good day to all my Form 4 students. Today we are here to discuss about the new chapter called Chemical Formulae and Equations. This chapter is chapter 3 of your Form 4 syllabus. Okay, so we are doing part 1 today. So let's start. Huh? So uh, in this chapter, teacher have to introduce uh, students to two new terms called relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. Students have to understand and visualize my explanation regarding relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass. Why? Because we can't really determine the mass of atom. Exactly. So that is the reason why we use the term relative. Meaning we relate one mass of an atom, a certain selected atom with another mass of atom. For instance, hydrogen. Hydrogen has the mass of 1. Carbon has the mass of 12. So, we can say carbon is 12 times heavier than hydrogen. Don't you think so? Okay. Hydrogen mass is 1. Carbon mass of the carbon atom. 1 carbon atom is 12. So, students can come into the conclusion that the carbon is 12 times heavier than hydrogen. But, unfortunately, in order for us to calculate the relative atomic mass, we can't use hydrogen as a relative atom. Why? Because hydrogen is a gas. So, it is very hard to determine the mass. Okay, so it's very hard to determine the mass of hydrogen exactly. But we just say the mass of hydrogen is 1. Okay, now, so that is the reason why we choose carbon as the standard relative measurement. So, this shows that whatever mass of an atom is actually relative to carbon. Meaning, when teachers say a mass of atom is 50, please remember, teacher used the word mass, but I don't use the word gram, milligram, kg or anything because we are talking about mass of an atom. So, it's going to be very small. So, we can't use the word gram for time being. Okay, so now, so if I say the mass of X is 50, this shows that relative to mass of carbon, relative to mass of carbon, the mass of this atom F is 50. Why? This is the reason why. So, that is the reason, that is the reason the carbon, teacher let you know why we use carbon, abundant, let me see, you can easily get carbon and it is a solid. Okay, so because carbon is a solid, okay, so carbon is a solid atom, okay, is a form of atom, so that's why it's easy to find the mass of carbon. Now, let me show you how do you relate a ma atomic mass, a mass of an atom to carbon. Okay, so now, so look at this, mass of one atom, okay, mass of one atom is related to one over to the mass of carbon 12. Now, this equation we can convert it into mass of one atom divided with mass of carbon 12 times 12. So, can you see that you get like this? So, that is the reason why the mass of atom is relative to carbon. I hope students can understand why the mass of atom is relative to carbon. Okay, because carbon abundant, we can get carbon a lot. And also because it's solid, so we can find the mass of carbon easier. Alright, okay. So that is how you find relative atomic mass. In fact, we write relative RAM, relative atomic mass. When teachers say relative atomic mass, for instance, look at this. I am telling the relative atomic mass of neon is 4. Okay, so neon is 4. This shows that neon, the relative atomic mass of neon is 4 divided with mass of carbon, one atom of carbon, C12, 
times V12. So can we see? This is related. This mass of neon is indeed related to the mass of carbon. Hydrogen we can't use because it's a gas. And it's a very, very, very small atom. Alright. Okay, now so let's move on to what is relative molecular mass. Same concept but just the bead of difference. Same concept but just the bead of difference where mass of one molecule is divided with 1 over 12 the mass of carbon 12. This shows that again we are comparing the molecular for, uh, molecular mass with carbon. Again okay? because a bundle and it's a solid. Okay, now here, okay, the same concept, students just translate this, so you can get mass of one molecule divided with 1 over 12 mass, sorry, mass of carbon 12 times 12. So, can you see this? Okay, so this is how you find the Relative molecular mass. Now, two steps. Two, not two ways. Two steps to find the molecular mass. Okay, relative molecular mass of a molecule is find the molecular formula of the molecule. For instance, water. We know that the molecular formula of water is H2O. So, molecular formula of water, H2O. Determine the correct molecular formula. And add up all the relative atomic mass of element according to the formula which teacher will be showing in this example. So I hope students can understand the meaning of relative molecular mass and relative atomic mass. Now let me show students one or two examples on how to find the relative atomic mass for your further understanding. Now, let's go to element U is 12 times heavier than neon. Okay, an element called neon. What is the relative atomic mass of U? Okay, so I want students to understand here. U related to neon is four, uh, 12 times heavier. This shows that 12 times heavier equivalent to relative atomic mass of U divided with the relative atomic mass of neon. Okay, so I hope you can understand. Element U is 12 times heavier. Okay, then neon. So, 12 is actually relative atomic mass of U, which this is what you are going to find out now, with relative atomic mass of the atom neon. So, teacher already give you the atom neon. So, how much will be the relative Atomic mass of element U 12 times 4 equals to 48. Now please bear in mind that teacher don't encourage students to use the word gram or milligram or micro milligram or anything. Why? Because we are talking about uh, mass of an atom. Please remember that we are talking about mass of an atom. So it is not suitable for students to use the word gram, micro milligram or any type of uh, uh, as I unit, okay, unless after that we show, okay, molar mass and all that. After that, in our next part, teacher will show uh, students about molar mass and how to convert relative atomic mass and relative molecular mass into gram. We have uh, another part of video where teacher will show students how to do it. For time being, please remember that please don't use the word gram. Even though relative atomic mass, so don't come into conclusion that you are supposed to write gram or micro milligram or kg or anything, right? Now, let's go to example 2 where teacher will teach you on how to find the relative molecular mass. Few examples here. Now, what have I written here is now, can you see copper 64? This is actually the relative atomic mass of one atom of copper. Relative atomic mass of one atom of hydrogen. Relative atomic mass of one atom of chlorine. So, automatically, when you see this, you know that the mass of chlorine relative to carbon-12 is 35.5. Relative to carbon-12, the mass of 
oxygen is 16. This is how you find. Right? Okay, now, so let's go further on how to calculate. Now, can you know, can you see the teacher has already written the correct molecular formula of the substance? Now, students can look at many, many examples. Okay, so you can work out many examples after watching my video. You can just work out many examples after watching teacher's video. Okay, on how to calculate molecular, sorry, relative molecular mass. Right? Okay, now, so let's look at this. First, you've got to have the formula. Okay, so you have, have the formula now. Determine, this shows that you have one atom of hydrogen, one atom of chlorine. So, this shows that the relative molecular mass of hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride is 1 plus 35.5. So, equivalent to 36.5. So, this is the relative molecular mass of HCl. Now, let's go to potassium carbonate. Can we see you have two atoms of carbonate, one atom of chlorine and three atoms of oxygen involved. So, that is the reason why you have to look for the relative atomic mass from above, which I have given. So, 239 because you have two atoms of potassium. Added with one atom of carbon, added with three atom of oxygen. Okay, so that is the reason why students can get the answer of 138. So please work this out so students can get the total answer 138. Okay, so 138 will be the answer. Okay, now so let's go to the next part. Copper 2 sulfate, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Now, copper, we have one atom of copper, one atom of sulfur, four atoms of oxygen, four atoms of oxygen. Okay, and can you see this dot? This technically means you add. Please remember, this is not like mathematics, where students, when you see this, you will times, but for chemistry, it's different. Okay, so when you see this symbol hydrated, you have to add, okay, the molecular formula. So, how you do is 64 because one atom of copper, add with 32 because one atom of sulfur, then you add 4 atoms of oxygen plus 5, 18. Okay, so teacher would like to tell students how teacher get 18. So, please remember that the relative molecular formula of hydrogen is 2, 1 plus 16. Hydrogen 1, oxygen 16. So, 2 atoms of hydrogen added with 16, you get 18. Okay, so that is what teacher have because I don't have enough space, I wrote like this. Okay, so that means 5. Can you see this? This symbol, this dot symbol is equivalent to plus, not times. Huh? Please remember that. Okay, not times. So, after this, students will get 250. So, the molecular mass, okay, molecular mass of copper 2 sulfate, hydrated copper 2 sulfate is 250. I hope students can watch this video again and again until you can get and understand. Okay, so the meaning of a relative atomic mass relative molecular mass and the few examples on how to calculate relative molecular mass. We will see you in next video part 2. Till then, thank you for watching and take care.